Good morning, everybody. Today is Thursday. It is um, March. I almost said February, um, and we are almost through the first week of March. It is March 4th. Um, here at school, we are wrapping up our Cancer Awareness Week, so it's a little it's going to be a little bit crazy here this afternoon. So I'm hoping you guys can get your lessons um, done this morning. I'm going to be watching you guys as you log in. So let's go ahead and get started. It is uh, Farmer Day here, hence my uh, pioneer hat. <laughs> so on Dojo, we have um, today is March 3rd, or I'm sorry, today is March 4th. And we write that 3-421 or we can write the whole word of the month, March 4th, 2021. You will have your vocabulary to complete. So review your word study box and now our standards connection box. We should be on words seven through nine. Those are the uh, seven, eight, nine. Those are the three words that we will be doing for today. Um, I did have some people message me and say that their stuff got wiped out. So I'm really thinking next week I might create like a Google slide for everybody. So I can't figure out why this is happening and to why I really doesn't understand um, either. And now that they have these new features of the save and edit and the turn in box, I'm really confused on what to tell you guys <laughs> to even do. So we may work out something else next week on Google Slides where we can create our own kind of slides that look like N2Y, where we can add our pictures and put sentences in there, and we can just work through that through this month. So if nothing saved, don't worry, okay? It'll be okay. No worries. We're not going to go back and do it. Do not go back and do them. So um, as you flip through your slides for this box, we're on word four right now, so we need to make sure just do words um, seven through nine today. So today will be sun. So word seven would be sun. Word eight will be weather. And you will have cold. So seven, eight, nine, just those three words you guys have today. Do not go back and fix what it did not save, okay? Like I said, we'll figure out something for next week. I kind of have in mind what I might do. Um, okay, so that completes our word study box and standards connection box. For reading, you will be reading what should Pam wear. So in your... More so do. I'm just going to hit save and exit, okay? Don't turn it in or else it'll mark that box completed and we're not completed with all of our words yet. So you will have your story to complete and then there's just a comprehension box. So multiple choice filling in. If you have lines in your, um, if yours looks different than this. Okay, that wasn't the right one. There's more to do. If yours is just words where you have to type it in, here it is, the reading comprehend box. Like this, Pam will choose what to, and then she decides what she is going to, you choose the correct um, answer there. There's more to do. When you finish that, turn that one in. And then we have our real world uh, writing. So for writing, you will complete the edit box. So power outage form. So this would be you as a customer calling in to um, report a certain problem you may have. So you will put your name, your phone number, you will choose the problem. So either, so our unit on weather is dealing, so this is a life skill for our unit of weather. So like, say we have a bad weather storm, you would choose uh, your power went out. Um, the power line is down. Um, I have an aunt who has a big, who has a big uh, electric line in her backyard. Well, the one post is on the neighbor's yard and none of the posts are in her yard, but the line runs through her backyard. So there was a time where that 
the line fell down from a storm. So it was just laying in her backyard. But her neighbors were the one who had to call because it was on their property. So when she called, they asked and she said, no, it's not. But the line is down on my property. So this may be a situation where you may also have to go and talk to your neighbors, your peers that live next to you and kind of tell them the situation like, hey, this is what's happening. Um, You're going to need to call because this has happened due to the storm, the um, winter storm, a thunderstorm. Uh, Maybe it was super windy that day. So this is a really good um, form and a skill that we could be working on. Um, in case something were to happen when we live by ourselves. So we would choose whether um, we were on the power line is down, uh, maybe a street light is out. Now, there are some times where I may be driving and there's a street light out and it's backed up traffic. It actually did. It happened in Paducah when they were making those new lights. It was just crazy. And I called and I said, you know, hey, I'm just letting you guys know that there's a street light out. Um, It's causing real bad traffic. Everybody's backed up on 24. So when you see these things happening, it's good to let somebody know about it. And they knew about it and they're like, okay, we're sending someone out. Thank you for letting us know. So there's an incidence when a traffic light might be out Um, and then a fallen tree branch on a power line. That's another one that's dangerous. that could cause something worse later on if we don't address the problem of this tree that has fallen on the power line. So this is a really cool, uh, I really like this box for today for writing. Um, The condition of the issue. So then you would have to say, well, this power line fell and it's making my lights flicker. Um, The power line is sparking. The utility pole has fallen. So maybe the that big pool in my uh, aunt's neighbor's yard, it fell. So you're going to have to report what has happened. And then they're going to want to know, well, what's your address? How do we find you? What's your location? Um, so then you would fill out your address. Um, don't forget your address. It starts with your street, okay? So say you live on uh, 345 Oak Road. That's the road. Now, let's do the city of uh, Palm Springs. And Palm Springs is in California. So making sure that we don't put everything on that first line where it says address. Split it up because it's asking for the city, state, and zip code. Um, And then you fill out your zip code. Let's just do... Six seven eight three zero. That would be uh, Palm Springs zip code. So you guys fill this out with your address, your phone number, and your name, choosing what the problem is and the condition of the issue, and whether it's immediate. So it says, is this an immediate danger or threat? So you decide. Like, say I had a Nana living with me, and she has oxygen that she needs to breathe. Well, if there's no power, she can't hook her uh, medical tank thing up (laughs) to help her breathe. So that is going to be a very immediate threat to her to her life. So they're they're going to have to know, like, hey, I have an elderly person here that needs electricity because they need this certain um, medical device to be able to breathe. So. Most of the time, if you tell them what's going on and let them know that, hey, this is an immediate danger or this is a threat to someone's health um, or house, they kind of decide what what they want to do because they're the company like, uh, we'll be out in a couple hours or we'll get to it when we get to it. So this form here will help us in deciding um, what we as a customer need to do when something bad happens due to our weather. Okay, so that's our real world writing. So we will move on to math then. Math is covering money skills today. So we will not have a money skill kahoot or lesson for today on money skills. 
because we have a lot of money skill boxes um, through NTY today for our math. Now, a lot of these are just identifying the, co the coins and mixing and matching up the amounts to match. And I know one of them is like adding up to $5 and adding up to $10. I'm going to click on this last box here because there's something that's called a one up method. So at the top here, it shows money skills amounts to 10 one up method. So let me work this one out with you and then you can complete that next slide. So we have a pair of shorts here that are seven dollars and eighty nine cents. How much how much do the swim trunks cost? So they cost seven dollars and eighty nine cents. How many dollars should you use to pay? So if your shorts are $7.89, so we have $7 that we have to pay, but then we have this 89 cents over here. And the 89 cents, we can't just forget about it because we have to owe that 89 cents to pay for those swim shorts. So the one up method would be knowing that if you have change, so if you have point something which is your change your coins your your quarters your dimes your nickels and pennies those still need to be paid so we're just going to add one to the dollar okay so we're going to put seven plus one to get our total of a one up method so instead of giving them seven dollars they're going to be like uh well you still owe 89 cents just give them eight dollars and then that covers the change so show the number of bills. So we're just going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And it counts it up for us, okay? So it just being that it was correct. Um, another, we could use a $5 bill and then three singles. That would be five, six, seven, eight. That would be $8. So here it has us using singles. Um, Single $1 bills, we could also use a five and three single dollar bills to equal the $8. So you complete this next slide here using the one up method. So if there's change here, we need to round that dollar up one, okay? There's more to do. Turn that in when you finish that box. And then we have the mean and median. This is review, mean and median. Um, I'm going to pull up our Google or our math. So I have pulled up our Google math notes here on Google Slides. And I'm searching for the mean and, okay, the mean. So our mean. Our mean is when we add all the numbers together. So if we have a set of data, so here's our data, 5, 3, and 10. We're going to add those numbers up, okay? Number two step says, keep that number from number one. So when we add five plus three plus 10, we got 18. So we have to keep that number in our head, 18. Then we're going to divide by how much or how many data numbers we had. So when we have 18, we had five, three, and 10. So that was three data, three data points. So we're going to divide eight, we're going to divide 18 by three, and that's going to give us our mean. So we add all the numbers together. We have the answer from that addition problem. We keep that number in our head. We divide by how many numbers we added together, and that will give us our answer for the mean. So let's look for the mean here. Okay, the first one asks for median. Here's the, okay, I guess I just read right over it. Finding the mean and median. Mean is the average of the chart. So we have Utah gets a 40 inches of snowfall. Vermont gets 89 inches of snowfall. Ohio gets 26 inches of snowfall. Pennsylvania gets 35 inches of snowfall. And Maine gets 77 um, inches of snowfall. So, it's asking us to find the average of the snowfall. So in order to do that, we have to add up all of our numbers. So here it shows step one. 
we added all of the inches together and they gave us the answer of 267. Now remember, we gotta keep that number that we added. So it kept, it kept our six dollars or our two six two hundred and sixty seven and there was one two three four five there are five numbers we added up so that's why we are dividing then by five so if we divide two hundred and sixty seven divided by five we get this answer so our answer is that's our answer that's the mean that is the average of the snowfall from from those states. So now our median, our median is, we got, okay, so median, we have all these numbers. We have to put these numbers that they give us in order from least to greatest, which is small to big on a number line. We start at zero and our numbers get bigger if we're working with positive numbers, which we are working with positive numbers, okay? So we're putting them in order from least to greatest. And then all we're doing is that, that I call it the boom method because I just say boom, 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 and we get our middle number, okay? So here we have median is the number that is in the middle of the data. So finding the median. So it took all these inches, all of this data right here, and it put it from small to big. So it looked, okay, 26, then 35, then 40, then 77, then 89. So we went from least to greatest. Now we do the boom, boom. <laughs> so this one, this one, this one, this one, here is our middle number. So that is our median, the middle number after we put the numbers from least to greatest. So on these next slides, you will then complete that. So it's asking you to put it in order right now. So what's the smallest number? So I'm gonna go look for the smallest number and it looks like it's 15. One. Okay, so that is putting them in order from least to greatest. Then all you're doing, you guys, is adding them together. So you're doing exactly what I just did with you in those first two slides. There's more to do. Turn that in when you finish. Follow the steps, pull up your uh, math notes from Google Slides. All I did guys, I went to my Google Drive, I typed in math and it pulled it up, okay? So you guys can access it that way and those notes will kind of help guide you through that. Our life skills application is checking the temperature. So the temperature is, so you're gonna look at this thermometer here. So looking at the weather, what can Ryder do today? So we see that it's at 10, 20, 30. Looks like 30 to me. So when it is 30 degrees, what do you think that Ryder will be doing? Shoveling snow, vacuuming, dusting, washing dishes, weeding the garden, going outside to do chores, doing inside chores, washing the windows, folding clothes, and washing the car. So I would definitely say if it is 30 degrees, he's probably going to do some inside chores, um, maybe dust or vacuum, or he'd be out there shoveling the snow. So shovel. I don't think it's going to say whether it's right or wrong because you are choosing what you would do or what this person would do if it was that temperature. So you have that to complete. There's Turn that in do. when you finish. Now, I'm excited about this uh, life skill lesson right here. So on Dojo, I put life skills. So this is on our life skills Google Classroom. It says watch this video. So you all will have this video to watch. And this is other kids talking about their feelings and talking about stress and how they handle certain situations at either at school or at home or with friends or when they get angry or sad. Um, I know not last unit, but the unit before, we did a whole chart on stress. 
and how we felt when we were being, when we had stress going on in our life or when we just had too much and it, we were overwhelmed. Um, and then on the next uh, slide we did, how do we manage the stress? And managing is how we deal with it. So what do we do when we're stressed or upset? So this video I want you guys to watch is really good. It's other kids talking about their lives. Um, so like, for instance, this girl starts with, if you feel like a bowl of mashed potatoes flowing through space, that is okay. So it talks about being you and how important it is to be you. You're not your mom. You're not your dad. You're not grandma or grandpa. You're not a sibling. You may look up to those people, yes, as a role model, but you are you. You are your own person and God created you to be you. So this is a really good video. And then on your exit slip, I have um, right here, self-care. So you will complete the exit slip on Google Classroom for self-care. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Once again, it says to watch this video here. So you can just click right there on the Google Classroom link. And then you will complete this exit slip on self-care. So number one, you are perfect the way you are. Yes, no. It is important to be who you were created to be, true or false. Everyone does not have stress and issues of their own, true or false. Self-harm is something people may struggle with, but it does not help the overall cause, true or false. Having a journal is something that can help with expressing our feelings. True or false? Drawing is not a good way to relieve stress. True or false? I love this picture. What helps you relax? So in the video, they talk about certain ways that they manage with their stress. So I want to know how you deal with your stress and how do you relax? Setting goals is a great way to help with decision making and focusing on those daily. True or false? It is important to be you. Love yourself. True or false? And then what is one thing you love about yourself? So when we talk about self-care, what is one thing you love about yourself? And then you give me your answer there and you submit that. My science students, you have CK12 lesson to complete on the scientific law. So you will have um, this little article to read your real world application, football physics for those who like football. And there's one video to watch on the scientific laws. And then you can complete your adaptive practice for um, overall understanding of the scientific law. Oh, I think that's it for today, guys. So don't forget to sign in. I will be checking in, saying good morning to you guys as I see you logging in on GoGuardian. I hope everybody has a great day. Um, later this afternoon, we are planting a tree for Alexa, so I will be taking pictures of all of us doing that here at the middle school, and we are looking forward to that today. So I hope everybody has a terrific Thursday. Um, I will see everybody later. Have a great day. Bye.